the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Good morning. October what 17th, is it? 17th, Praise yeah. the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, let's pray. Let's get into the word. God has always got something for us. If we will Amen. just sit at his feet and learn of him, there is no ending of his goodness or his mercy. There is, uh, he's infinite in, in wisdom and revelation. And uh, uh, even in the ages to come, he's going to show us all these things. But he wants to show us some things now. So we're going to get into that and, 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 uh, and understand uh, some of the time that we're in right now because oh, we're yeah. in a major shift. So Father in heaven, we just praise you and thank you with holy hands uplifted, oh, yeah. submitting unto you, yielding to your spirit in worship and praise, in spirit and in truth, Father. And Father, I praise you and thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes over us that has made us new creatures in Christ Jesus. And where that blood has washed and the word comes, your Holy Spirit can rest. So, Father, I praise you and thank you for the word that has been ratified and been uh, exalted because of the blood of Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And I thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit that dwells within us and lives upon us to enlighten us, to unfold, to reveal to us that word. Bring it alive within us. Burn out all the old dross from us as we, we receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Now you got your Bibles there. Uh, open your Bibles to Hebrews the third chapter, and then find Ephesians chapter one. We'll start there because we're going to talk a bit about uh, the calling of God and what it means, um, and and uh, how we've got to hear and yield to the calling of God. And it's it's not just you know what people say. Well, he called you to be saved. Well, yeah, he did, but it's a lot deeper than that. Yes. So Hebrews. Let's start in uh, in uh, in Ephesians. No, pardon me. We'll start in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter three, and uh, then we're going to go someplace because this is this is so strong in my heart. We're going to show you the the fullness of that calling and where that calling ends up, the destination or the destiny of that calling. So that you can be a part of, of, of it as well, right? Hallelujah. Because he's no respecter of persons. Amen. He's a respecter of faith. So Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ, who is faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. So Jesus, when he was on earth, uh, let me get make sure that this is on so I get this sound properly. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus, when he was on the earth, was a king in his own domain. But he wasn't king of kings. He wasn't lord of lords. Uh, people began calling him Lord because they recognized the anointing on him. Uh, they recognized that uh, what the scriptures had said was being fulfilled in and through this man. So they began calling him Lord. Um, and uh, he, But he always deflected it back and said, well, there's only one good. There's only one uh, uh, that's, that's really ultimately that's the father. Um, because he knew as a, as, as a person that was, he was divine, but he also had all the tendencies of a human being. Uh, and that was evident because the Bible says he was tempted in every way. So he knew the limitations of his flesh and he kept his flesh under. Now he needed the flesh. He needed the body to, uh, to have the authority 
and to be present in this earth, the word made flesh. But he also knew that, you know, if there was a temptation in every area, he could have yielded to it if he didn't watch it. Because if, if, if there was no temptation, well, then the whole thing's a fraud. Right. So now he can't be tempted. So well, I said that to say this. He was appointed over the household of, of, of God, not when he was on the earth. He came as a prophet under the Abrahamic covenant to speak the word to the people of Israel. And they were supposed to reverence and honor the word like faithful Abraham did. But there's, there's something a little bit more we've got to see. So we've got this heavenly calling. And he starts off there, wherefore, holy brethren. Okay, well, this heavenly calling is a holy calling. And the heavenly calling is not, uh, not what most people think in their mind, well, to get to heaven. No, this heavenly calling is, is, a, is a calling to know and understand uh, how the things of heaven or how the things of the kingdom operate so that you can operate here and now yeah. in them. You can dominate using the things of the kingdom here and now. Okay. Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 and let's pick up something there. And we're going to, uh, you know, probably shock you with some things here, but uh, that's all right. Sometimes people need shock treatment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And, uh, you know, around this, this you know, per, per group here in this, this church, you'll know this one. It's a very, very familiar passage, but let's not get so familiar that we don't understand that, that it's limitless within itself, right? Oh, the Word okay. of God has no limitations to it. Uh, it is only limited by our lack of knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. However, if the Holy Spirit is the teacher and we reverence Him, uh, like what Brother Kofi would say, you know, if the Holy Spirit's a teacher, even a rock could learn. So now, Ephesians chapter 1, here Paul is praying, verse 17 says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know that the hope of his calling. Know what is the hope of his calling. Know what is the hope. We're going to deal with that because that will... Uh, that will that will should stir you up enough to make some changes because this this whole you know thing called a pandemic and all that well it was uh, fear was 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 stirred up so much that it overtook all reason and common sense mm -hmm. and it took and it actually took over a lot of facts yeah there was a lot of facts pushed out of the way by fear. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was designed deeper to do something else. It was designed to cattle prod you into a, uh, like a chute that forces you into, into a place. And last time I you know, saw cattle, when they were being forced, they were always being forced down a chute and a pathway into a corral, and they were being corralled. Yeah. They never did that to the open spaces. And see, the whole thing is designed to get you to, to submit and be more uh, uh, dependent on another system. Why don't you depend it upon the world system and the government system? Now, as you see this calling, you're going to say, you know, you should have been taught this earlier, and you should have been weaning yourself off from the world system. P people are even doing that today in the natural. They're trying to get off the grid. Mm -hmm. Well, to, to get off the grid, you're going to have to understand that you're, you're going to have to change systems and 
and it, it's not so hard, but it, it's got to be a a, a a a quality decision, and it's got to be something that you actually uh, do. Okay, so it says there, verse eighteen: the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. In other words, you've got to be opened. You've got to be able to see what and know the hope of his calling. He is calling. He is calling, he is calling, he is calling. And deep calls to deep, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Well, that means there's no end to the calling. He's calling you deeper and deeper and deeper into things. You have to hear and respond. Because just like he's called you, go over to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And let's look at verse 9. God, faithful by whom you were called. Okay, so he's called you. Now, what did he call you to? Under the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay. Now, the word there, fellowship, is the same word we would get partnership from. So he's called you to fellowship. He's called you to partner with his son. Okay. So if Jesus is your partner, then you really should make him the senior partner because he's the one that has all the answers. And if you're his partner and you make him senior partner in, in all things, then you're going to be very, very successful because he has never failed anything. The failure comes when we don't let him be senior partner. We try to take senior partner, and he sits there watching us. He's waiting. He's going to be there. He's not going to leave you. He's going to be waiting there, but he's going to usually have to come and pick up the pieces or the mess, fix the mess. Now, he's not too troubled by that because he can fix the mess like that if you come back and make him senior partner. But don't forget He is senior partner because he's the wiser one. He's the elder brother. So let's make him make sure that he is the elder brother, right? Okay. So we find there's three scriptures there that he God is calling us. He's calling us to partnership with with his and fellowship, partnership with his son Jesus Christ. He's uh, he's got a heavenly calling for us. And Paul praying in Ephesians, he called us. To, the, uh, to know the hope of that calling. Now let's go back to Ephesians 1 for a minute and let's pick up a couple other things as, as we get a little deeper into this because like I said, you know, Proverbs says, deep calleth unto deep. Well, how deep do you want to go? Well, you really should go as far as deep as, as God wants you to go. He wants you out in the deep waters, not ankle deep yeah, waters, yeah, right? Yeah. He doesn't want you in knee deep. He wants not even waist deep or, you know, uh, armpit deep. He wants you out there in the deep where you have to depend upon him. And when I say depend upon him, it's not just uh, blind trust. It's you've got to really depend upon him and have him as your working partner, because that's what he says the partnership with Jesus Christ. He wants you to partner. He wants to be your working partner. Okay? So Ephesians 1 says, in verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Okay, so how do you get light? The Bible says the entrance of his word brings light. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. The reason people have so so much uh, confusion on what, what they're supposed to do is they won't get enough word to lighten their path and to lighten their ways. Because he will enlighten your ways. But it must come through his word. Now, watch, because uh, he says that you might know the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of an inheritance in the saints is. Praise the Lord. Now go back to verse 11 there in that same chapter. It says, in whom we also have obtained an inheritance. 
Well, we have already obtained this inheritance. It's in you in Christ. So you're not trying to get it. You have obtained it. But what does he say? It's, he says that you have to know the hope of his calling and the riches of his glory. That has to be revealed or unfolded to you. Now, I can say the first part of his calling is to fellowship with him, partnership with him. That must be a decision. Not I, not, not, I get saved so I can go to heaven. No, I'm a partner with him. Okay. Now, let's go to the end of this thing and see the destination in a couple of areas. Because if you can see the destination, and, and you can see, uh, you know, Bible says that uh, without, uh, uh, without purpose, people cast away restraint, mm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so if you can see the end, and you can see the picture clearly, then it will be easier and more desirable to take the necessary steps. I mean, if you can see what you're supposed to look like and that these are the steps to get there, well, then just take the steps. But see, people, they don't know the end result. They're waiting until we get to heaven. So there's no, there's no steps on this earth. You just wait. They're waiting for their harvest. They're waiting for this. They're waiting for that. When the Bible says, and Jesus telling the, telling the rich young ruler, uh, telling the, the woman with the issue of blood, he said, your faith made you. He didn't say God made you. Now, I understand faith comes, but see, people get, get confused there. They're waiting for God to heal and waiting for God to do this. And it says your faith will make you. Oh, he's gone to muddling. He's gone to muttering. More praise. Now, so let's go, let's go and look at, at a couple of the end things that he's called you to, and especially this generation. Because if we see what he's called us to, and we discover the qualifications for that, then we can decide whether we really want to go and meet the qualifications. Now, if you don't, he's, he's not upset with you. He's not mad with you. It just means you'll probably see him in this day and age a lot sooner. Because the things that are that are coming upon the earth, uh, we have just entered into uh, the beginning of things. Now, don't get caught up with what most people did in looking at the pandemic and listening to you know the woo and listening to this person because that's exactly what the devil wants you to. And Jesus said, when you see these things begin, look up, look it, look. Keep your eyes up on the spiritual thing because you're not going to see the glorious church looking at all the problems. Mm -hmm. The glorious church is going to rise above all these things. And, and that's where we're going here. Go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, I, I have taught this before, but I had to back down a little bit and, and get some foundation. To get here, Second Thessalonians chapter two, well, let's let's start in verse fourteen and work it back as we need to. Where until he you he called you by our gospel, okay, so he called you by our gospel to something. okay, so this is what the gospel is is for. He called you by the gospel to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's called you to obtaining the glory of Jesus Christ himself. See, if, if you're an heir of God, you're an heir with Jesus Christ, and everything that Jesus has, you have, Amen. and you have inherited. So you've inherited his glory, and we're supposed to obtain it. Well, that hasn't been taught very much. People are all waiting for the glory from the outside instead of obtaining it. Now, go back to verse 13 because there's a, some, some nuggets in there that really need to be brought out. But we are bound to give thanks always to God. Now, if you're bound to anything, it should be bound to giving thanks. It should be bound to joy. It should be bound to gratefulness. Don't get bound to something else. 
You know what depression is? It's concentrating all your thoughts on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you start looking at you and concentrating on you, you're bound to get depressed. Everybody is bound to get depressed if you just look at you. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, right? And see, that's all depression is. So you've got to get your eyes off of you and onto some somebody else, which would be Jesus. Now, having said that, when I say when I say you, you, I'm talking about the carnal you. If you start seeing you through the word and who you really are, there is no depression in you. Amen. There is no sickness in you. There is no lack. There, there is no failure in you. There's no failure in you. All failure comes out of the flesh. Okay. But look at he says, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Okay, so we are the beloved of the Lord. Are you going to be a being or try to be a doing? Because if you're being a being, you're being loved on him, by him. If you're trying to do a doing, you're not going to be loved on him because he's he's loving on your being. Now, you can take the loving on your being and put it into some of your doing, but you've got to be loved on. Not try to get loved on. Okay, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and the belief of the truth. Now he says through sanctification. Now what does sanctification mean? It means to separate you from some. From one something to another something. Okay, well, that's what happened when you got new birth. You were taken from darkness. You were taken from sin. And he separated you completely from that. And he made you one with himself. But that's not where salvation ends. That's where it begins. He says he wants to the, to the saving of your soul. Well, what does that mean? He wants to separate your soul separate your soul from all darkness to light. How does he do it? Well, through sanctification of this, the Spirit does the work. Amen? Amen. But it's, and belief of the truth, and belief of the truth. So therefore, I have to hear the truth about the matter before I can believe it. But when I believe it and and receive it and actually allow it to work in me, it's separating me. It's sanctifying me from the old. So in other words, to renew my mind is to separate my mind from old thinking patterns to new thinking patterns. Or you could say from old thinking ways to new thinking ways. So I start thinking like he is, thinking along the way, not a many different ways, the way. Okay, so that's the nugget and the principle that he's going to, we're going to obtain the glory by. Uh, Just go back a little bit, because we've got to bring this in here someplace. Go back to Colossians. Chapter uh, 1. Now remember, he said that, you know, he called us by the gospel to the obtaining of the glory of Jesus Christ. In Colossians 1 and 23 says, If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Well, what was the gospel calling us to? Obtaining of the glory, right? So the hope of the gospel is the hope of the glory of God. Right? Okay, so now jump down to verse 20, 27. It says, to whom God would make known, what are the riches of the glory? What are the rich? There is that phrase, the riches of the glory, of this secret among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now go back to Ephesians chapter 1. 
Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ, or the anointing in you, the hope of glory, right? Yes. Okay, verse 18 says that you may know the hope of his calling. Well, he's calling to you, obtaining the glory by the gospel. The gospel is Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? Amen. Okay, so he says, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you know the hope of his calling, which is obtaining the glory. And what are the riches of the glory? Well, then he has to begin to reveal the inheritance that brings you the glory. He has to reveal things because he's told you he wants you to obtain the glory. Then he has to reveal what you, what he wants to give you, right? Yes. Okay. So he says that you may know the revelation in the riches of the glory. Re revealed knowledge of what you have inherited that brings you the glory. Now, Go to Ephesians 3. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm going quite fast, we'll, but we'll get some foundation out here, and then we'll, we'll, we'll begin to teach some things. Ephesians 3, verse 16 says, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. According to the riches of the glory. Okay, so when he reveals a piece of that glory... When, he re when you get revelation, he's revealing his glory. Revelation is, re is actually revelation of his glory, of, of, of the glory of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Revelation of healing is revelation of the glory. Hallelujah. Right? Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to obtain the glory, so you're supposed to obtain your healing. Okay, so then we grant you according to the riches. So he's going to grant you according to the revelation of the glory that you get. Okay? He's going to grant you according. I mean, that accord, word according means there's conditions to it. So it's according to the revealed knowledge of his glory. Okay, so if you got revelation of the new birth, well, you got new birth. You got the riches of his glory in new birth. That's the beginning. But there's a whole lot more. You must be re it must be revealed to you that the riches of his glory has provided healing for your body. When it's revealed to you, then it's yours. See, that's how God works. You can hear it and hear it and hear it and, and try to intellectualize it, try to, you know, to theorize it, all those kind of things. But as long as you do it that way, you're not going to get the revelation of it. And it's not till you get the revelation of it that it has any power. Amen. Now, I'll show you something uh, that will help you immensely, though. But he says, so what's he doing? According to that, that revelation, you're going to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Okay, well, when you believe, then he sanctifies you, right? Sets you apart from that old way of thinking and, and, and old way of believing. Now, his spirit, which is separated from the old way of thinking, strengthens you with might in your inner man. Right? Amen. Why? So that the anointing may dwell in you by faith. So every time you get a revelation, the revelation is for you to take your faith, lay hold of that revelation, and with your faith, bring the anointing and the strength and the power out in your inner man. So you've got to know about your spirit man more than... See, now this is how you feed the spirit man. You, you feed the, the natural man through the mouth, and it goes in, and it, your, your digestive system takes what it needs and flushes the rest out, right? Yeah. Okay, the same thing is true with your spirit, man. As you feed on the Word of God, as you hear the Word, of, the anointed Word of God, and you lay hold of it by faith, then your spirit, man, which is right-working, and your spirit, man, has been made right working so it could digest the things of God. 
because it's working on the same level of God. It digests the word of God and it produces faith, which then in turn causes the anointing, the power of God, the strength and power and might of God to dwell in your inner man. Now you've got something in your inner man that when something comes, your mind goes, we got all these problems down here. And you can go, shut up, head. I'm spirit man. Amen. I'm faith man. Hallelujah. And your spirit man can come, over, come, come on the scene and take over. Your, 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 your soul was never meant to. To do that, your soul is just to um, express what's inside you. Do, do you see that? Amen. Okay. Look at verse, verse 16 and 17 again. That he would grant you according to the riches. Okay, whenever you see that phrase, riches of his glory, put revelation of the glory of God. Think that way because that's what it is. It's rich, 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 rich. In other words, it has abundant supply for all of his glory. That's what the word rich means, abundant supply. Okay, so according to the abundant supply of his glory, he wants to abundantly supply his glory to you. Hallelujah. Right? Yeah. But it comes through revelation. Then he says, to be, and it's for the purpose of strengthening you with might. Well, that's not your might anymore. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And see, that's where he's going in this letter. He says, you got to get this revelation so that when, when you put on that whole armor of God, you can, you can be strengthened with might in the inner man and be strong in the power of his might. You're not doing it in your own strength. Then he says, verse 17, that Christ, that the anointing may dwell in your hearts by faith. Well, now you've got the anointed one in there when you receive Jesus, the anointed one. The Bible says you have an unction, you have an anointing within you. But what's he want to do? He wants to increase, fan that flame, and he wants that anointing to be uh, usable in every area. If all you know is the new birth, then you can't use new, the new birth to fight the devil with. When it comes to, to healing, yeah. I'm born again. I'm born again. No, you, you that's that's wonderful. That's a good place to start. But you don't fight for your life for healing with I'm born again. I'm born again. You fight for your life on healing. I am the healed. I am the healed. I am the healed. I am the whole. Yeah. And see, without the revelation of that, which produces the strength and the power, his power and might in your inner man of the fact that I am the healed. You are coming to steal my healing, devil. And I've got the strength and power of might in my inner man. And it's not my strength and power and might. It's the same strength and power and might of Jesus Christ. And he beat you, whooped you every side, every time. Every time he's quoted the word, he, 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 well, now when I quote the word, when I speak, there should be something coming out of me more than just some empty words. Right? Okay. Now, he said that the anointing may dwell in your heart by faith that you may be rooted and grounded in love. See, he called you beloved. He wants to love on you and love through you just like he did Jesus. But you got to have a revelation, not only of that he loves you, but that, that, that the revelation that that you know that love is for the purpose. Love will back. See, the love is to, the love, the power is to back the love. And he says he wants you strengthened with power and might in the inner man. Why? To back the love. So that when you go to love and walk and live in love and walk, you're not, you're not just living, living and walking in some, well, I'm going to be nice to you. No. If they turn on that love, you're still backed by the power and the might. You don't have to, you know, run and go, well, they didn't like that. They didn't take Jesus till Jesus let him, let them take him. Mm -hmm. 
So they're not going to take me until I let them. Well, I ain't letting them. No. Now, let's, let's go back to 2 Thessalonians on our way to Revelation here for a moment. Let, let's read again. Just so we got our eyes on it and we hear it and we hear it. 2 Thessalonians 2.14 says, Whereby you were called by our gospel. Okay, so this is the gospel. Obtaining of the glory of God. Or, or the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't go around just saying, well, you know, gospel got new people, new people, new birth. That's the beginning. But you're supposed to obtain the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, let's see where that will end up. Oh, praise the Lord. Go, go back to Ephesians 5 before we go to Revelation. Ephesians 5. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, now. The progression in Ephesus is he's revealing all, all this revelation of the glory to strengthen you with power and might in the inner man that the anointing, that the glory begins to dwell in you and live in your hearts by faith, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse, well, let's start in verse, uh, verse 17. It says, Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Okay, so here he tells you specifically, bold letters, this is what the will of the Lord is. So if I'm not going to accept this as the will of the Lord, what makes you think I'm going to get the more intimate, the more uh, personal touch? Because this is a commandment for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. To understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, Paul, what is the will of the Lord? Be not drunk. With wine, we're in his excess. Well, if you know anything about the spirit of drunkenness and, and that, he's saying, and, and, the, and that excess, he's saying, do not be drunken by anything in excess. You can get drunk on food. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you, can, you can get anything in excess. The spirit of gluttony and drunkenness are the same spirit. And he's saying, I don't want you to be under the influence of anything uh, in excess. How do you do that then? But be filled with the Spirit. Again, in the, in the Greek, that, that phrase is, but be being filled. So in other words, I, I stay constantly filled with the Spirit. Well, how do you do that? Well, you've got a well within you, and you've got rivers of living water within you. Then you've got to let them constantly come up and out, which means you've got to do a lot of praying in tongues. Why? To let it flow. Yes. Okay. I'll prove it because verse 19 says, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So when he says speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns, he's talking about speaking by the Spirit mm -hmm. and, and to yourself. And Isaiah 28, we may go there if we have time here, but, we, but he says that I will speak to this people with stammering lips and their tongue. So when you're when you're singing and uh, singing in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs in the spirit, you are building yourself up more than you ever could any other way. Yeah, the Bible says, you know, uh, man edifies himself, charges himself up. Okay. But but look what he says. So he says he wants a spirit filled life. Okay. Then drop down to. Uh, Verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, well, unto Jesus, but unto Jesus through what? Through the anointing. If we're not going to allow the anointing and be subject to the anointing, 
you know, see, there's, there's, there's a, a, you know, great lesson. If someone walks into a room and they are, they have the, you know, the, the top anointing, everybody should submit to that right then, because that anointing is going to flow down. You put other people in there and you're going to get the same old stuff you had all the time, right? right. You know what? She says, as the church is subject unto Christ, let the wise be under their own husbands in everything. Now, there is the problem, because as the church is subject to Christ, if the church was completely reverent, honorable, and following Christ, a woman would never have problem following their husband. Hallelujah. They wouldn't. It's in their makeup. It's the problem is when a man starts going, well, you're going to have to subject, submit to me, and da 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 da. Well, if you're pushing that on, I also I also know right now you're not subject to the anointing because the anointing doesn't work that way. It does not force. It woos and and leads. Mm -hmm. Okay, and see if the church is subject unto the anointing. The family problems start going away because the anointing does what? Destroys the yoke, removes the burdens. So it'll destroy the yokes that are in the family, removes the burdens in the family, and let loves dwell. And if love's ruling and reigning, we have a happy family, right? Okay. Look at verse 25 there. Okay. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So you better be giving yourself to Christ. You better be giving yourself to the anointing so that you can love your wife. Because you ain't going to love your wife without loving the anointing and submitting to the anointing. Because you can't do it. It can't be done. We got Christians that are trying to live a Christ-centered life without Christ. Without the anointing. So, so watch this. Because he says, as the church is subject to Christ... Let the wives be unto their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might, that he might. So here's the purpose of what you're giving yourself to. What you give yourself to starts to sanctify you or set you apart. If you give yourself to the anointing, it sanctifies you and sets you apart to cleanse you. But if you give yourself to something else, what's it going to do? It's going to separate you to that thing, and it may not be a cleansing thing. It may not be really bad, but it's not going to separate you to God. Now, why? That he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Okay, so I'm going to give myself to the things of the word because the word produces faith. Faith produces the anointing, right? Right? The anointing dwells in my heart by faith. So now I'm getting set apart. I'm getting sanctified. I'm getting washed over by the washing of the word. Why? That he might present it to himself, a glorious church. Now, we already read there, we're supposed to obtain. The gospel is the gospel of obtaining the glory of God. We've ne I've never heard that by anybody. Oh, you need to get saved to miss hell. Well, that's a truth, but the gospel is the gospel to the obtaining of the glory of God. Which then means we, we can only obtain it one way, his way. Right? Amen. Now, we read it from Scripture. The gospel is, is to obtaining the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, the same glory that he had. Okay? Now, that he may present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. So he wants a glorious church. So he has called us to obtaining the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Yes. Okay. Well, where are where is the church in this thing right now? It is so far removed from this because as soon as you start touching on this, you have to go back and lay certain foundations. Now, let's let's one on the way. To, let's one more time. Second Thessalonians chapter two. 
That's that's hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, right? Verse 13 says, we are bound, so I bind myself to give thanks. I, I am not going to get bound to grumble mm-hmm. or murmur. Mm-hmm. And see, the more you do it, the more increases it increases. Yeah. I'm bound to give thanks always for you, beloved, beloved, beloved. So stop trying to do and stop and be loved mm-hmm. of the Lord because he has from the beginning chosen you to salvation. <coughs> Excuse me. To salvation. He's chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of the truth. So when you heard about the new birth, you could believe that truth and you got separated from the world. But what about being separated from all the other spot and wrinkle by the washing of the Word? Without the washing of the Word, you're not going to have anything to believe, right? Yeah. If you don't have, if you can't believe it, then the Spirit can't sanctify you or change you. Now, wherefore he called us, called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not a lesser glory. That's the same glory. Now, we're going to have to define that somewhat here. And and that's my assignment to the body of Christ. You guys are so blessed getting to sit here because yes, one of the things are. that I, that that I, my assignment is is the glory of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank now, you, so there is there is the uh, the pattern, and there is the destination of the body of Christ to obtaining the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not when we get to heaven, here and now. Without vision, people cast away restraint, right? Okay, so that should be your vision to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so then we're going to have to have to find out what things do I do to obtain that? Because, see, the, the, the problem is purpose. When people don't have a have a, a quality purpose. They cast off, well, I don't have to do this. I don't No, You're going to have to. There are some requirements to obtaining. Now, it's requirements his way, not the way you think. But there are requirements to obtaining of this. So I'm going to have to find out what these requirements are. And then I'm going to have to decide, do I want to do that or no? Because he's not going to force you. Yeah. So that is that is that is the, the purpose, the destination. That is the vision of the church should have had. Not just get everybody new birth. It would be easy to get everybody to the Lord if we had if we really had the glory in the church. They would go, whoa, can I get some of that? Yeah. Now, let's go to one other scripture here, and we'll, we'll set us up because I, I showed you the start of it. Now, I, I showed you the, the purpose in the end the obtaining of it. And there's one other thing here that if we see uh, and get a hold of, it will change it. If you don't get on fire for this, you know, there's not much hope for you uh, getting, getting caught out of here. You're going to have to, you're going to have to tribulate for some because it's just not going to work. And you'll see it as, as we get, uh, don't, don't get into fear. Okay. So revelation 19, We're talking about the glory, the heavenly call, pardon me, the calling of God, the heavenly calling of God, and what He's called us to. And it's not just to come to heaven and 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 float around in clouds. He's called us to the obtaining of His glory. And look at Revelation 19 and verse 9. Well, verse 8, rather. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Okay, so my righteousness, your righteousness, should be looking, should look in the spirit realm as the righteousness of the saints. It's fine, glistening linen. Well, was then when is the last time you looked at yourself and and found out whether you got fine, glistening linen or you got a bunch of spots and wrinkles on your linen, on your garb, yeah. garbs? Okay, 
Because it's what? The linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, there is another thing that especially this generation should have it in their ears and before their eyes, we are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now let's go to Matthew 25 and find out, uh, find out a little bit about that, because we are called. Now it says, blessed are they, or empowered are they that are called. Okay, well, you have to hear the call to respond, because God never, ever does anything by just snap. If he did things by jerking you out of here and jerking you out of there, then he would come down and make you tithe. He'd make you do your offerings. He'd make you be in church. He'd make you do all these things. But he doesn't, right? Right. right. Okay. So he calls us. The, the, what you, when you got new birth, you actually heard the call to fellowship with his son, like you said. But deep call us to deep. He wants you to come in deeper than, than just, well, I'm born again. And where does it go? Anybody listening? Matthew or something. Matthew 25. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We're talking about the marriage, marriage supper. Because, see, this has been such a confused um, thing when you, when you talk about, you know, missing that. Look at verse, look at verse 10. For a moment, he says, and when they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Then afterward came also those other virgins, they're born again, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered, Verily, verily, I say, I know you not. Now, people, when they hear that, I know you not, they think that they weren't saved. They were saved. He's saying, I, I, the uh, curator of the marriage supper, the bridegroom, I don't know you in your garments. Mm -hmm. You're, 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 but you're, you're not ready. You know, see people get, oh, is this, am I giving you scripture or not? Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. So there's a call to that marriage supper. <clears throat> Well, then we have to hear from, from the Word. Now, I'm going to say this and, and prove it from Scripture as, as we get into it. Um, do you know that there's certain benefits that you can only obtain certain things? Like the, the, you cannot get the benefit of a tither. You can't get the benefit of a tither by, by praise and worship. Mm -hmm. You can't get the benefit of praise and worshiper by tithing. There's a connection to different things, but you can't do it. Okay, so there is the benefits uh, of a Sabbath goer that you can't get any other way. Now, the word Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word Moed or appointment. Moed or appointment. And God commanded them to keep certain Sabbaths. It also includes the word feasts. So all God's Sabbaths, all God's feasts, all of them were appointments. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was a God feast, it was a God appointment. Right? Right. Okay, so uh, like any good person, God would give them a time and a place because you can't show up if there's no time and place. Okay, so you're going to have to find that place. You're going to have to, uh, and then the time, and you're going to have to go to that place at that time and place. You can't show up here tomorrow and expect to be fed because I'm not going to be here teaching tomorrow. I'm doing some other things, okay? So, uh, and the three main appointments under the Old Covenant was the day of Pentecost, first fruits, and uh, the tabernacles is the, um, 
but there were ones of Passover. So the Passover, tabernacle, and, and uh, feast, feast of Trumpets, which was the tithe, the Passover, and the first fruits, you had to you had to go. You could not stay home from those appointments unless you wanted to be cut off from the Lord, from the blessing. Well, bring that through the new covenant. We don't do the Sabbath on the sixth day. So you know, and you got, and you got to. I'm not putting it down because there's so many, many, many things you really admire about Seven Day Adventist people. They are dedicated to that Sabbath day. Just pick the wrong day for New Testament people, because the Bible says on the first day of the week, New Testament. Okay, so New Covenant, New Sabbath. Everything, every, everything points. Everything is consistent. You want to do the old Sabbath and do all the old stuff, but make sure you do the, you know, get your your goats and bulls and lambs out, and you get them flayed and slayed, and uh, you do that because you, if you do part of it, you got to do it all. Okay, but but again, they are dedicated and committed, which you know a lot of the a lot of the church isn't. Now, uh, let's. Look at the benefits of that because I want to talk to you about the appointments, time and place and appointments. Because there is a day in God's calendar when Jesus is going to return. Mm -hmm. And on the Hebrew calendar, it is called the day of no man. That's why when it gets translated wrong, when we, we want to get into the English and it says, you know, of the day and the hour, no man knoweth. Well, there is a day in, in their Hebrew calendar that's called no man's day. And that's the day he's coming back on. Problem is, the Hebrew calendar has years that are some, some are 364, 65, one is even 389. Okay, what? That's why Jesus said during the Passover, he said, that they said, are you coming up to this, this feast? Because they knew he never missed a feast. And he said, I'm not coming up at this time. That was to their feast. Because, see, they had to watch the moon. And when that moon was just right, exactly, that's why he said signs in the sun and the moon. When that moon was just right, it was a full moon or a new moon, and it was now, now they would count from that day so many days to the feast. Mm -hmm. Well, now, if you had a, a, a you know, a, a discrepancy, well, that's not quite full, maybe tomorrow. Well, they could be off by a day or two, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll show you something about that because, but there is the appointment. There is the Passover which is the yearly turnaround for the year, right? Mm -hmm. They had to make that one because that was that, that would put them under the blood, under the covering, right? right. They had to make the, uh, the first fruits because <clears throat> the Bible says that you take that first ripe one to the priest and your whole harvest is now protected. So, in other words, if you got a hundred acres in tomatoes and a hundred acres in beans and five hundred acres in corn, and you see that first ripe corn and that first ripe tomato and that first ripe bean, you would grab them and say, "You know, honey, stay here. I'm going down to the priest." And you would present those to the priest, and he would and he put the blessing. Now, your the, the bull weevil, the the canker worm, the caterpillar, all those kind of things could not touch your crops. The Bible says that the first first fruit be holy. Give it to the priest, then the whole rest is protected. And then there was the uh, feast of uh, feast of trumpets. Well, that was when the harvest came in, and they're going glory to God. Look at all this abundance. Now they they would tithe to the Lord because it belonged to Him, right? Okay, we don't. Do any of those feasts? 
we just bring them through the cross in the new covenant. We 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 do Passover. We do it in a, in, in a type in the form of communion, and we can do it whenever you know in remembrance of Him, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's right? We we tithe, and we we do first fruits or offerings, but we've got to make those appointments, not just I do this. So go go to Exodus chapter chapter twelve. <clears throat> Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Cool. Glory. God, I got to keep an eye on the time. I want to get it glory. Some things I want to get done. Okay, so verse 1. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So God just came in, and when he was separating them from Egypt, he was separating them to his timetable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now if they kept all the appointments, they were always in tune and in time with him. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Let me say that again. If they kept the appointments... They were always in the right place at the right time with him. So you want to be in the right place at the right time all the time? Then you need to really seriously look at keeping some of the things because the, the Sabbath gives you, gives you benefits that you can't, you can't get any other way. Now, let me, let me add to you that too. The Sabbath is a covenant of rest. A covenant of rest. What do you mean? Well, rest from all your work. Mm-hmm. You should be, when you get up on the Sabbath the, 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 and you're coming to the service, you should go out going, I'm getting rest from my soul. I'm not thinking about anything else, uh, but I'm getting rest. I'm getting enough rest. I'm getting enough restoring. I'm getting enough refreshing that I'll have more than enough for the whole week. Hallelujah. But see, we, we don't we haven't heard that, right? Mm-hmm. It's a it's a covenant of rest. Yeah, more than enough. Now, let me let me go let me prove that in a couple of scriptures. Go go to Isaiah fifty eight. We got off, we got off on a little thing here, but that's the way the Lord's leading, so that's okay. We're going to come back because see that that appointment with the marriage feast is an appointment, but it's going to have to you're going to have to you're going to have to hear the call. Hey, hey, hey! Today is the day. I'm calling you today. I'm calling you up hither. Come, come up hither. Yes. So you're going to have to hear the call. Then what? You're going to have to know how to respond. Because Jesus said, will I find faith? Will the Son of Man find faith when he returns? Well, if I hear the call, and the Bible says there is a blessingness to those that are called, then there is already an empowerment waiting when you hear the call. All you have to do is respond to the call, and the faith will be there. But you better hear the call. And see, remember when when God spoke uh, about Jesus a, a couple of different times. Uh, what what did they say? Well, it thundered because mm-hmm. they couldn't hear the they couldn't hear clearly. <clears throat> well, see, my job, and see, that's one of the blessings of the Sabbath as well. Now that that bless is if you're meeting His time and appointments, then you're going to start hearing clearer and clearer because you're obeying His time and place. If he says, here's the time, here's the place, and you obey, then you'll get clearer and clearer. And see, people, people, we got a whole lot of people not here today because it's not that important. Yeah, okay, so when he says, hey, come up hither, it will not be that important to them. Faithful to the little things. See, these, 
these things weren't just done because God wanted to, to put some stuff on us. Okay, praise the Lord. Now, go to with me First Chronicles. And then we'll get back on this glory thing. But this is this is part of it because we've got to we've got to we've got to change some things. And then I'll show you what what the Lord has been the Lord showed me. And you know some things you can't get out, even though you see them until the time is right, because it wouldn't edify the people. They wouldn't understand. And once you hear something, you are then responsible for it. Now, 1 Chronicles 12 and 32, oh, verse 31, rather. And of the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000, which were expressed by name to come and make David king. So they were expressed by name to come. Well, you know that your name is written, so he's going to call you by name on that day. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. There's, there's an a understanding of times. But you know where they got all their times from? Obedience to the word and looking to the spirit. Obedience to the word. So we've got we to not only be just, you know, Word people, but we've got to be spirit people too. Yes. Okay. Now, let's go back to uh, Matthew 25 and, and we'll see what was missing. And back to the. Okay, so verse 1 says, Then so the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. So they're all equal, right? Mm -hmm. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So they're all, they're all sensing the calling that the bridegroom is coming. And five were wise and five were foolish. And the foolish ones took their lamps and took no oil with them. So in other words, they didn't have enough sustaining glory of the Holy Ghost or glory of the anointing to sustain them. But the wise took oil in their lamps or in their vessels with, with their lamps. Okay, so they've got, they've got enough anointing, enough sustenance to keep them going. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slept and slumbered. Well, okay, so that there's a sleeping and a slumber that comes before because he's coming late in the, you know, in, in the midnight hour or the watch, right? Mm -hmm. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out. Now, everybody heard the cry because this was a cry from man. In other words, God had men. God had women, prophets, speaking. Bridegroom's coming. The bridegroom's coming. The day is coming on us. 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 But there's going to be nobody on that, that, that day that's going to say, it's today. Now, you will know if you're listening that today is the day. You'll wake up and go, it's today. Today is the day. Wow. I just know today is the day. Wow. Well, how will you know? Well, remember when uh, go to... Hold your place right there. We'll come back. Go to um, Kings. Second Kings chapter 3. Second Kings, rather. Just... Hallelujah. Second, Second Kings chapter 2. In verse 5, it says, And the sons of the prophets were there at Jericho, came to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou not that the Lord taketh away thy master from thy head today? They didn't know the day before, but that day they knew. That was the spiritual people. So my job is to make sure that everybody in the realms of glory is ready. 
Hallelujah. And if I can get you sitting here, I will I will have you ready. I will guarantee you by the word of God, I will have you ready. And they said, knowest thou that? And they said, yea, we know. Yea, we know. We know. We know. Okay, back to, to uh, Matthew. Praise the Lord. Verse 7 says, Then all the virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. Okay, so what was missing? Oil. Well, that's a type of the Holy Ghost or a type of the anointing. Well, how, how does the anointing dwell in your heart? By faith. Where does faith come from? Hearing the word. So we're, we're going to have to continuously teach. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. Are you getting anything yet? Yes. Hebrews chapter 6. And part of the Part of the milk is, is, is in here. He says, verse 2, of doctrine of baptisms. Well, okay, so if you understand the doctrine of baptisms, the Holy Ghost baptism is in there with the blood and the water. Yeah. Right? Yes. So if I stay filled with the Holy Ghost, and then it says laying on of hands, okay, well, that's my association. Who do I associate with? Because the, the doctrine of laying on of hands is, is twofold. It's about the law of contact and transmission. You can contact and transmit things by touch. So you what you touch is you. You guard your heart, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also about the law of association. The Bible says, make no friendship with an angry man lest you get learn his ways. Why? It's not just... It's not just about the word. It's about what spirit is on people. You get into, get into a religious church, and there's a spirit. Even though the word's going forth, it's like they got a religious spirit on this, and the word really isn't effective because they got a religious spirit. Your traditions and your ways make the word of God of none. And we've got lots and lots of churches now that are word, but they don't know the moving and what spirit's operating when he's when he, I've seen it. Seen it time and time again. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Now, watch. Look what's the next one. And of the resurrection of the dead. Now, this is still milk. But the resurrection of the dead includes the catching away of the church. And it includes the final resurrection. Now, that's part of the milk. So if, if people had been taught that correctly, there wouldn't be confusion around, oh, uh, you believe in this pre-trib, mid-trib, or, you know, post-trib, or what are we going to trib? Well, why would you want to trib? Jesus said you don't have to. No, the part of them, the, the foolish virgins are going to halfway trib because they missed the they missed the marriage. Didn't miss heaven. Go to go to back to Revelation. And let me show you by scripture. Praise the Lord. And if, you know, praise the Lord. Revelation 7. You know, see, people get their girdle in or not because, well, I'm gonna, I'm saved. I'm just as saved as you are. Well, maybe, maybe not. You're born again, so that that counts for a whole lot of things, but that doesn't count for the being ready for the marriage. Now, it takes that to be ready. I mean, that's the starting point, but that doesn't mean you're ready. It takes the oil to be ready, according to scripture, right? Right. Okay. Now, watch. Uh, Revelation 7, let's look at verse 13. And one of the elders answered and said to me, What are these that are arrayed in white, linen, white robes, and whence came they? And I said, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Okay, well, that's twofold. That's the people that get saved in, in that first part of the tribulation. But it's also those that, that didn't keep their robes white and keep enough oil. Because we wrote, we, we read over there in Revelation what, what it means to have, have white, white linen, right? 
the righteousness, the righteousness, the righteousness. Okay, go to Isaiah 61. You still tracking with me, following? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're going to get down into to some things that you're going to you're going to absolutely love. Isaiah 61. Now, verse 1 and 2, or verse 1 and half of 2 have been fulfilled. You know, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And Jesus, when he was on the earth, closed the book. Now, after the resurrection, we can open the book again and we can pick it up right there. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all. Now, the day of vengeance is not revenge. It's the day of, 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 of payback and restitution of all things. Yeah, praise God. Okay. Now, I'm going to... I'm, I'm kind of holding back here because I want to get over into some things and I'm going to speak some things... Uh, that the Lord wants me to speak through word of wisdom and word of knowledge. But I want to get a foundation. He wants me to get a foundation laid so that when, when it comes, you'll be able to put this where it's supposed to be. Because sometimes when we hear things, we think, well, God's just going to do this. No, he's not. He's already done. Do you understand in God's heart and mind, this thing is done at the end of the book? Just as... Okay. Yeah. Now, and a day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Okay, so you and I have the, the assignment of carrying out the day of vengeance. Now, that's not revenge, it's vengeance. We have the assignment of, of getting all things back that have been taken away uh, up until the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's our assignment. Occupy till we come, right? Mm -hmm. He says, to a point. Now, this is a, that's, an, that's an appointment. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for, oil, for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, that's an exchange. Uh, you know, I'm casting off my sorrow and putting on joy. No, I've cast off my sorrow. I've put on joy. I'm not doing it because it's an exchange. Did you get new birth? Well, then you calfed off your sorrow. You put on joy, right? Now you can see if you're going by feelings. <laughs> yeah. You don't feel that way every day. You don't feel that way all the time. But you have cast it off. Now watch. He says, put on the garments of praise for the spirit of his, that they, so here's the purpose, that they may be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord, that he might be that he be glorified. So all this righteousness is about his glory. Because you can't have glory without him working it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, that's why you were made the righteousness. Now, we're going to receive tithes and offerings. And uh, we're going to make a a bold confession while we do it here. Let me just... Um, get this over to that. Praise the Lord. Okay. So I'm going to give you just a minute. And we're going to go through this. It's not very long. But we want to present ourselves as well as our tithes and offerings, right? Yes. Because, see, if he's receiving my tithes and offerings, he's got to receive me. But if I'm not presenting me, praise the Lord. Praise okay. Lord. So a million is spelled M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Amen. And if you've got more than that, we'll just take the M off and put a B. That's fine. We'll, we'll receive it all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Okay, when you got it, just hold it up before the Lord, and let's let's make this confession from our heart. We'll, we'll do this till we get it down, down, and down, and just about the time you get it down, I'll change it. <laughs> no, no. Well, this is this is what the Lord was put on my heart how to do it. So, all right, praise, praise the Lord. Let's just praise Him for a second. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You ready? Yes. Okay, it's on the screen, so you can you can all read it there. Yes. Praise the Lord. So let's let's begin. Father, I come willingly in the name of Jesus to present myself, my tithes, and my offerings to you. I give them with joy from a grateful heart. Receive them in Jesus' name and receive me. With my tithe. I activate the fullness of the blessing on my life, and it opens my heart to hear more clearly from you, your word, and the Holy Spirit. I also rebuke the devourer, Satan, from stealing anything from me or my household, including the precious gift, the revelation you give me. I now sow my offering as a seed with purpose, to go produce a harvest for me. I sow in faith and love. Therefore, I receive the harvest on it right now, calling it into my hands in Jesus' name. Angels, go bring me the harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so, you know, put that in the basket uh, and, and rehearse that in your heart. The harvest, you've got the harvest now. You have it. Okay, so now let me show you something about this because you met his appointment by being here in his Sabbath, right? Time yes. and place, time and place. You met that appointment, correct? Yes. Okay, so there is a time and place for your harvest. Well, receive that as well as the harvest. I, I thank you, Lord. I will be at the time, and I will be at the place where my harvest will manifest. I will not miss it. I will be there. I will be there. Okay. Can you prove that by Scripture? We'll go to James 5. And, and, and or pardon me, Ecclesiastes says that money is answering all things. Well, that means money's got a voice, right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, James. And see, I can prove money's got a voice. If you look at your bank account or you look at your bank statement and your checkbook, what is your money saying to you? Well, we're just about out, and it's not the end of the month yet. That's what it says to a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. There's not enough. Right there, you need to start speaking and calling the thing that be not as though it were. Yes, amen. Start calling the thing that be not. Because, see, you're not. You can't get there just yet. Praise the Lord. You're, you're not bound to this world system. Amen. Now, James chapter 5. Verse 1 says, Go now, you rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Now see, a lot of these people, he's not talking to the world there. He's talking to the church. This is a letter to the church. And he says, you've let, you've let the money that you have, which is corrupt, corrupt you. Well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't let money corrupt you. Because money, the Bible says that money is mammon without personality. So if it's corrupting you, then what, it, what is it doing? It's bringing out the corruption in you for the love of money. Well, change that. That's easy to change. Just say, you know what? I, I repent of covetousness. I repent of, of lusting and greed of different things. And so I stop it now and I rule over money. Money is a tool that I will use for the kingdom. And then see, if you do that, yeah, 
Praise God, I, I've got to get there. So now watch. Because he says, your gold and silver is cankered. The rust of them shall be witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. That's the second fire. And you have heaped up treasures together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which you have kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of the seven. So he's hearing money. When, when you take money by fraud, and you, if you steal something, then what you have stolen is crying out, I'm stolen, I'm stolen. Get me back right, get me back right. I don't care whether it's uh, a car or an election. You get something stolen, it's going up before the ears of God, and change is coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now, what has to happen, though? See, the, the higher or the money is crying out, right? It says that. It says your higher is crying out, and it's crying out fraudulently. It's supposed to be in the hands of the righteous laborer. But it was stolen or defrauded. So it's crying out, fraud, 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 fraud. Now, what has to happen for you to get it? It's crying out, and you got to cry out. Now, when you cry out and it cries out, you will meet. Now, I don't mean, uh, you, you know, you, you, you whine and cry. You just go, Father, I have been wronged. Because he's the God of righteousness, right? Yes. I have been wronged. I have been defrauded. Things have been stolen from me. I want it back. Well, Joel says that I will restore to you the years the locust has eaten. Well, Jesus. And remember what it says in Second uh, Second Kings: the, the the woman came back and she got her farm back and seven years of back wages. Now, I'm going to say something here is not just as a pastor. I'm going to step over into my other offices. But do you understand that when Egypt, Egypt had Israel bondage, that God wanted to separate Israel from Egypt? Well, that's a type of the new birth. Mm -hmm. He wanted to separate it to himself. Okay. When he did, he said, I, I don't want you going without those 420 years of back wages. Well, do you know that the world owes the body of Christ billions of back wages? Because all the technology that, that has been released into the earth the only reason God couldn't give it to Christians is because that, that kind of wealth would have destroyed them. But that was wealth for the sake of promoting the gospel. Amen. And that wealth is supposed to be in our hands. Mm -hmm. Now, you think they've pushed and tried to push and push and push and, and, and force you to take a vaccination of four. You wait till this month because it's being released. It's being released now. And you wait till this money starts leaving their hands mm -hmm. and coming into the hands of the Christians that can handle it. It's not coming there, just everybody. Everybody's going to get some, some overflow and, and some good testimonies. But, but the real wealth is coming to those that have the vision of God because it is for, it is provision for the vision, for the plan, right? Amen. It, it's gonna, it's gonna, and they will, they will start, they will come and have to come together, and they will say, "Hey, we got to get a one system here uh, globally because we got to stop this drain. We got to stop this, 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 this lossing of all these things. So we're going to have to set up, and the only way we're going to do that is we're going to have to have a number, and we're going to have to force everybody to have this number. Those guys can't buy or sell without this number." That's what this whole thing was about. It was a testing of how far they could push you and make you do something. 
So church, wake up. Let me say this too, because you know there was a, a Southwest um, canceled all their flights or a lot of their flights or whatever. You know what it's all about? Well, yeah, it, it was about that, but it was it was the pilot saying, "We're not going to have you force us." Thank God for those pilots. Yes. You want to stay in office very long, you better get on the right side of things. I'll tell you this right now as a minister of the gospel, because he's taken over the politicians, the politics of this nation. And if you're on the wrong side of it, judgment is 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 looming and do you know what judgment is? Judgment isn't a hard, dirty word. Judgment is just a harvest come to fruition. Now, if you're on the right side of righteousness, I want all the, all the judgment I can get. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, thank God I got the blood of Jesus. If I missed it, I can, I can put it under the blood. But all judgment is, is a harvest come. Well, you've been sowing corruptness. Corruptness is about to be judged. Amen. And you don't like, you don't like the harvest that bring comes with it. Amen. So um, that's all I'm going to say, but I'm going to say this as a minister and as a prophet of God, we have come to the place where uh, you need to reach out and take hold of those things. But I've been teaching you more about the sanctification to the glory, because you know where the, the, you know where the money goes to the glory. The first time that money, that gold is mentioned in the Bible, it's referred to as the glory. Now go to Haggai. Oh, hallelujah. Now you can hear this, but you, 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 if you just hear just this one message and, and don't get the, the foundation and the undercurrent of, of, of the sanctification and how to walk in the anointing, you're going to miss it because... There are qualifications for this. Haggai. That's that little book right between uh, Zephaniah and Zechariah. Now look at chapter 2. And I'm telling you, the spirit of increase is upon me and to speak some things. And what was held back, what was delayed for years... You got something that's been delayed for. If you're still standing on, if you're not, then dust it off and get it, get it out. But, but whatever you're standing on in faith, it's going to come to pass, and it's going to come to pass suddenly, and a lot of it before the end of this year. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You've been denied something. You've been delayed something. Some, some things are going to happen for you. But you've got to line yourself up, time and place or appointment. Okay, now look at look at verse 5. It says, according to the word that I coveted with you when you came out of Egypt. So he had a covenant to get them out, but he the covenant was don't go out empty. Because what brought all that wealth for all those pharaohs for all those years? The wealth, the, the, the blessing that was on Joseph mm-hmm. brought that. Well, what... What made all the blessing on the United States for all these years? It began to really culminate with with President Donald Trump because he was God's chosen person. Mm -hmm. Don't don't you dare bleep me because I said that. Like your company, you better get on the right side of things. But it was the founding fathers cutting a covenant with God about America that they would promote the light of the, of the gospel around the world. Yes. And the glory, the wealth, comes for the promotion of the glory. Because yes. he says, according to that I covenanted with you, we came out of you, my spirit remain among you. Now we're going to have to watch what spirit, because he says, fear not. Now that's what that fear was put in. It was injected into us to stop us from getting the what we're supposed to get. Mm-hmm. 
He said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry. Okay, if you did not don't understand, God did not have anything to do with this COVID. But before it was happening, about two or three years, he was talking to me. He says, major change, major shift, major change, major shift. I've got to get the body of Christ. They didn't listen. I couldn't even get that out in, in some places because uh, they wouldn't hear it. They weren't ready. So don't you dare go back to what was normal. Amen. But don't go back to what the government's trying to tell you. Because they're trying to shut you down. They're trying to... You can't talk with a mask on your face. No. Watch, watch this. He says, I will shake, the, shake all nations. All nations. Well, one little COVID uh, shook whole nations. The desire of all nations shall come. What is the desire of all nations? Money. Isn't it amazing that we rise up? We got money for COVID. But we don't got yeah. money for other things. Yeah. He says, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. What glory? The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace or wholeness. See, we're, we're in a time, I will tell you this right now, we're in a time you're going to start seeing in, in, in this place here, because I know I know what we're doing with the gospel, we're going to start seeing body new body parts yeah. manifest. We're going to start seeing people are going to be made whole. Yes. Your marriage is going to be made whole. It's going to be made wonderful. Your, 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 your kids are going to be whole. They're going to be oh, sitting yeah. beside you yeah. in church, praising God, yes. be trained and taught of the Lord. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, and Father. but... Because the glory is here. But with that glory comes an awesome responsibility and a lot of finances because that is the end. That's the destination, obtaining the glory. Obtaining the glory of Jesus Christ. Obtaining the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, in these next weeks, I'm going I'm to couple that with prayer because we're going to have to learn how to pray properly. We're going to have to know, we're going to have to know how to use the prayer of, of dedication, the prayer of consecration. Prayers that most people have never ever heard. Most people know that one or two prayers. Oh God, oh God. I, I hear people all the time, oh God, send the fire, send the go. Can't. It's here. You've got to line up with it through the word and by the spirit. <clears throat> We've entered in a new era. Do you know that all time uh, is connected to, se to the sevens? Seven years, seven sevens, 49, then, then what? Year of Jubilee. Seven days in a week. And even, even in a 24-hour period, you have three sevens and a transition. There's seven hours of intake, seven hours of rest, seven hours of digest. And then there's a turnaround which goes from one to the other, which three times seven is 21. You put the other three, you get 24 hours. There's always a transition now, 2021 is the year we're transitioning. We're transitioning. We're making great change. And, and this great change that's come, you're going you're gonna to either flow with, flow with the Spirit of God or you're going to go about your old, old ways and you're going to get stuck in religion. It's here now. It's, it's not coming. God never brings... He's never getting ready. I had a, uh, a minister, a prophet of God, speak some things over me uh, not just a few weeks ago. And he said, that same spirit of increase that's on him and Jesse is on me. Well, I know that. I know that. And I know how much it increased and in, in what, in what it's doing. But he also said, God has given me promotion. Well, I know the, the place in the spirit realm. <clears throat> Amen, amongst other things. But that increase is going to be increased in miracles. 
increase in healings, increase in deliverances, multiply, multiply millions, increase in finances. But I got to get you here sitting. Sitting. Do you know what? why Jesus commanded them to sit? When you sit under something, you're sitting under that authority. You are submitting. <clears throat> now, this is true in a church. That's why you get people to sit. The ushers and the greeters, they're standing over. They have authority. You listen to the ushers and greeters. Right? Now, Go, go with me to first, first Samuel, and I'll, I'll show you something, because there's different levels of authority. And you've got to learn to recognize it if you want to go in the things of God. First Samuel 19. First Samuel 19, look at verse 20. And see, here's a couple of things in here. And Saul sent messengers to take David. Well, remember Saul was after to kill David? Mm -hmm. So he's got the wrong spirit. And when they saw the company of prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, standing appointed over them, so who was the main man? Samuel. Everybody submitted to his anointing. And when they did, they got the right spirit. Now watch what happened. The spirit of the God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And that happened again and again. And then uh, finally Saul went down there. Look at now, now watch this because I want to show you something. Praise God. Yeah, praise. Thank you, Jesus. No. Verse 23, and he went thither to Nathoth and Ramoth, and the spirit of God was upon him also, and he went and prophesied until he came to Naoth and uh, in, in Ramah. And he stripped off his, his clothes also and prophesied before Saul in like manner and laid down naked all that day and all night. Wherefore they say, is Saul among them? Now see, he could have had a change of heart and change right there. He didn't accept it. You know what happened? He died and he took Jonathan with him. Why? Because Jonathan was more loyal to the flesh and faithful to God. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not just, but see, there's, a, there's also that the law of, of, of laying on of hands, or the law of contact and transmission, or the law of association. You get, in a, you get into a place, you watch, you're gonna, we're going to get people in here that are going, and while they're in here, they're going to be like that. But as soon as they leave, they won't make the necessary changes. Why? Because you've got to submit and get planted. Mm -hmm. That is, submission is such a big thing these days. So, uh, praise the Lord. Well, let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. because. <clears throat> so who has the problem in the shoulder, uh, at the upper shoulder here, in the muscles on, on the left side? There's somebody there is watching me, or somebody, somebody here on the left side. Well... It's gone now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say it again. Praise you, Jesus. Glory, glory, God. Someone's having an issue with hemorrhoids. Uh, just rub your cheeks. From going away. Wow. Praise Jesus. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Praise you, Lord. you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Praise you, Jesus. You, Hallelujah. Glory, glory, now, glory, again, I got this. There's a time you pray and believe and you receive, but there's also a time you need to speak to things. Let me say that again. There's a time you pray, believe you receive, but there's also the time that you got to speak. You sometimes you got to speak to your body parts. Sometimes you got to speak to those things, and in the name of Jesus, command them to fall in line. Because I say it like this: I present this body as a living sacrifice to you, O Lord. 
because I present it to you, this body shall function with optimum efficiency and with excellence of unity. It shall perform that way because it was created by you and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Now, body, I'm commanding you from the top of my head to the soles of my feet to get in line as a body that's been redeemed. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you've got to tell yourself that sometimes. You got to, it's your house. It's the house where you live in. Do some repairs on it. Do some upkeep on it. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. But most of all, present it to the Lord. And then renew your mind to the word of God. Amen. Amen. So, Father, I've given you your word. We're going to to touch on the glory because the glory is, I can see it right there just hanging, ready to just come in. Praise you, Jesus. So we're we're going to continue along this line because we're called to obtaining the glory. We're called to obtaining that glory. We've got to see it through Scripture and, and to know what it is because if, if I'll give me one more, one more minute here and go to, go to Isaiah chapter 4. Hallelujah. Now this, this will make a whole lot more understanding in, in, in your spirit than maybe before. But Isaiah chapter 4 It says, verse 2, it says, In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. Well, who is the branch? Jesus is the the, uh, vine. We are the branches, right? So we're supposed to be beautiful and glorious. Now, beautiful always refers to holiness in the Bible. In the beauty of holiness. In the beauty of holiness, right? Yes. And the fruit of the earth... Excellent and comely for those that are escaped of Israel. Now, escaped what? We'll, we'll get to that in just a second here. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion, he that remaineth, shall be called holy, every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When? When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. So when he goes back there and he says, they that are escaped, well, are you going to escape the judgment and the burning of the world and get over with God and be red hot with him? Or are you going to just be lukewarm and be spewed out of his mouth? See, it's not, it's not, well, I know the, no, it's not just the word. It's the anointing that that word brings. And it's that oil that the word brings and staying in the Holy Ghost. It's, it's not just the, it's the word and the spirit. It's the word and the spirit. It's the word and the spirit. Jesus was the word walking around for 30 years and didn't do anything. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, the spirit came upon him. That was like putting, uh, you know, a match to gasoline. Boom. (laughs) Hallelujah. Like my friend used to say, boom, shakalaka. You know, (laughs) something's going to give because there's just too much power there, right? Hallelujah. Well, we made a confession earlier. If you can, if you can uh, follow this from your heart, just to, uh, you know, I would benedict you with this. Just say, Heavenly Father, I make the commitment. I make the dedication to sanctify myself through your word, by your spirit. I will hear from heaven. I will obey. And I will follow the Holy Ghost as he leads me. I will stay full of the Holy Ghost. And in Jesus' name, I will not come up short in anything that you have for me. Thank you that your word is a fire. It's burning out all the dross in me. It's healing and health to all my flesh. And I thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Father, I commend everyone to you to the word of your grace that's able to build them up, to keep them, give them their inheritance, 
as it sanctifies them. I thank you that the blessing of Jesus Christ is upon every spirit. I thank you that the love of God has been shed abroad in every heart. And I thank you that the communion with the Holy Spirit become more alive and more real than anything else in their whole life. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, uh, till later, uh, God bless. So I have a testimony. Um, this just so goes with the message.